Hello everyone and welcome to a new episode from Your Soul Essentials. And today I have a new guest on my virtual table and this is Marcel Gaman and he is a contact between the Arcturians and Earth and Marcel wants to talk about the um, the contact and how he um, got or how that contact uh, established for him in his daily life. And welcome, Marcel, for you being here and uh, that you are welcome here for doing together with me this podcast about the Arcturians. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, Marcel, just <clears throat> my question is, how in your daily life um yeah established the context between the Arcturians and you how in in how did that go and and can you tell us something about that uh well um it's a bit of a long story but uh, the gist of it is that um i um looking back i've always had um a voice in my head or multiple voices in my head and um when i was doing uh work such as uh, uh readings or or lectures or whatever i would usually uh come up with ideas and well, basically, uh, words would come to me, and um, I never really understood what that meant. And um, so I, I just uh, I, I used to call that well. Let's put it nicely: uh, pulling a story out of my hat. And. Uh, so I would just say things and then later on I would think, where did that come from? And this is also uh, something that made me realize that uh, none of the information belongs to anyone. All of the information that is available is available to everyone. It's just that you have to be um, connected to a certain frequency to be able to pick it up. And apparently I, I've been picking it up for all my life, but I didn't realize uh, where it came from or what it was exactly. And then um, about, yeah, it's almost two years ago now, I had a near-death experience and um, it showed me some important things about me. And... Um, then they started revealing themselves to me. First, they were in the front, so they uh, they showed themselves to me. So I kind of know what they look like, and um, they moved a little bit to the back now. So it's 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 uh, I I I like to call it. They back me up, so they're always uh, behind me. They're always uh, on the on the left or on the right shoulder or both, and um, so what they've told me is, well, we've been talking to you for all of your life. It's just now that you are in this particular situation that you're able to understand that uh, this is a frequency you're picking up, and we're actually talking to you. And that kind of made it, uh, well, a little more cozy, actually. Uh, I wouldn't say that I got to know them, but uh, it made it easier to 
uh, to convey whatever it is that comes to mind. And how did it for you occur in your daily life now? Is it just like an on and off switch that you push and they are there with the things that they are talking to you? Or how um, or do you have to go in, into a meditation? Or is it just like this and you hear the voices? Because uh, what I'm trying to do with this podcast in particular is that for people, they are hearing voices too, that they don't have to be afraid for that. Yeah. Well, I've seen uh, I've seen many people what they would call channeling and 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 that kind of thing. Uh, usually, they show you and they tell you that you have to be in a, a certain state of meditation, that you have to be in a quiet space. Um, all sorts of uh, circumstances that need to be created to be able to do this. Uh, this is not how it works for me. The way it works for me, it's it's always on. Uh, I just get uh, answers to questions once I direct myself directly to them. And sometimes when it's really important, they, uh, well, <laughs> they start ringing in my ear. <laughs> let's let's call it that way. So uh, there are some situations in which I uh, didn't ask them specifically to say anything, but uh, then they would very much like to be part of the the, the conversation. So they 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 plug themselves in, and uh, they usually do that in a funny way. So that's that kind of makes it easier. <laughs> <laughs> okay and when was the time that you noticed or, or discovered that they were particularly from the Arcturian energy well um, in the end I just simply asked them okay so uh <laughs> I I I had suspicions before, and uh, I just asked him. So are are you are you Arcturians? Yeah, and they they tell me, well, you are too. And they actually said, actually, in this uh, particular frequency where we operate, you are actually the uh, the the highest type at the table. So that was kind of weird. <laughs> I w uh, wasn't really expecting that, but that kind of makes it uh, it makes it uh, a big part of me. Can you and I, I guess I guess I'm a big part of them as well. So uh, apparently, it is uh, they have a council and. Um, Apparently, in their uh, frequency, I am the chairman of the council. So I'm actually part of the elders. And that's probably something that happens uh, simultaneously because our, uh, our idea of time and space is, is very limited. Um, the way we look at it on earth and um apparently i'm there as well so <laughs> it's kind of a weird re realization but it it explains why the connection is so so clear and so direct and um I've actually asked them. So, am I am I asking uh, questions to me? And they said, "Yeah, also, yeah, you're actually talking to yourself and to all of us." So, um, I guess that would be uh, 
you could consider that something like a, a higher self. Okay. And what did it do for you, Marcel, in your daily life? Did it enrich in your life? Did it give you many insights? Did it uh, give you something that you uh, did understand yourself better or maybe in a different way, in a most, better, most, different way? Mostly that. Mostly that. I mostly um, started understanding how uh, how I operate. Uh, in this particular realm that we're in. And um, there are some things uh, that I've always found hard to explain for myself. And um, feeling that connection with, uh, with my origin, actually, uh, made it easier to understand why I do the things I do and where I get my information from. And uh, like I said, it, it made me realize that uh, information is not property. Nobody owns anything. It's, uh, it's something that needs to be shared. And it's something that is shared in, in, the, uh, in the general field. And... Um, it's just a matter of finding the right plugin to get connected to that. And I think that all, all because we're all, uh, in the end, we're all star beings. We're all fitted to, uh, to be able to operate in this particular vessel that we're in. So we should all be able to, um, connect to the same information but i do suppose that for some uh some beings like myself it's easier and i also understand the people that have to create circumstances to uh to get to that level i understand that now i i didn't used to understand it because it was so uh it felt so strange to me that people had to had to get into a, 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 a trance kind of state or uh, an, what they would call an enlightened kind of state because it was uh, so relatively easy to me. So it made, made everything very clear about myself, about my surroundings and about uh, our connection to um, to the stars, really. Um, what did it for you in um, or brought you in daily life? Um, what I mean is, we know the Octarians have a very high level of dimension. Mm -hmm. They operate in a very high dimensional being energy and um, for other star people or star beings it is quite difficult when they are in the eighth dimension or seventh dimension or even lower they have to adjust with particular lives their energy and for an Arturian energy it's quite easy for jumping to other dimensions in particular, the, the different levels, yeah, easily go from a ninth dimensional level to a fourth or a fifth or even a third, without that many consequences for as for another star being it has. But how is it for you when you tap in that energy and that realm? Do you feel that you are shifting? to the ninth dimension or that they are shifting lower to your uh, frequency? It, it doesn't feel that way. Um, I suppose that in a way I'm already operating at a higher frequency, always. It, it just seems to me that way. Uh, one of the things that that uh, became very clear to me is uh, I've always had uh, a, a great lack of patience 
and I've always attributed this to uh, being an Aries. Uh, but as it turns out, for an Arcturian, uh, stepping into other dimensions, other times, other uh, other places is just uh, is just a flick of a finger. So, um, that, that way I could explain why I had such a lack of patience because things in this realm operate at such a low frequency and everything is so, so slow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, this was, as a child, this was maddening to me because it, everything was just how how could everything be so slow it just it, it annoyed me and up to up to a couple of years ago it still did i was struggling with with the thickness of this of this gooey substance that i had to wade through instead of just being very light water or something and um so that made it clear to me like oh right so i come from a place where i would operate in this way and at these speeds and everything slows down here uh, so of course i'm annoyed because <laughs> i'm kind of trapped in something that i'm not used to so um that was one of the things that uh, uh, came uh, forward very much in my uh my daily uh my daily dealings and uh when it comes to the contact i don't i don't really feel like i'm shifting to a higher gear and they're shifting to a lower gear uh it sort of feels like they have uh and I, I don't know if this is specifically with Arcturians. They say no. <laughs> 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 they're intervening right now. It's no. Okay. So they are okay. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're always there. <laughs> okay. So it's easier with uh, from Arcturian to Arcturian, but uh, Arcturians can use the. Oh, so, okay. So they can use portals. So they actually use portals to uh, push information through and they can direct it at anything, in this case, me. And um, it bridges that gap. So they don't need uh, frequency changes. Uh, be oh, <laughs> because it's very uncomfortable to them. <laughs> That's what they just said. <laughs> You can understand. <laughs> so it's very uncomfortable to go to these lower, like it is uncomfortable for me to be in this vessel, in this body, in this, uh, in these surroundings. Uh, so they would rather just uh, just push it through a portal. That's why sometimes it feels like shouting. That they are shouting to you. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Especially when they want to get a message to cross, <laughs> or uh, when they establish the first contact, they it sounds like they're screaming through a tube, uh, telling me to position myself at the other end of the tube so that I'll be able to communicate with them. <laughs> so um, it's it's very direct. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Okay. And back to your uh, nearly death experience. Um, was that in the line of your life experience that you or that they had to uh, put you in that situation so that you were meant to be, to listen to them? Or did that had a very other uh, yeah, meaning? in your life well like i said it's uh apparently i've been listening to them always i just didn't know it and um i don't know if the uh 
the near death experience was an exercise for me to uh, become aware of the of this of this contact, or uh, that it was just a separate event that changed something in my life that had to be done. Mm -hmm. And um, because I, I feel this is not the only thing that has come forward. Um, so uh, it's not like the near death experience established the contact. It was already there. It just uh, raised my awareness. And uh, I think it raised my awareness in, in other uh, things in life as well. And um, so I think this is something very personal to me. I, what, what I've seen so far with near-death experiences is that it's something that you need to go through to, to be able to, uh, to take the next steps. And one of those steps was realizing that mm -hmm. I had an open channel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the reason why I bring that particular theme again is that I don't, or I, I do want to avoid that listeners are thinking, oh, I, I should go through a near-death experience to establish a contact. No, no, that is what I do want to avoid. I think everyone is capable and able to listen and to feel when the contact is made also from the other side. That's my opinion. Well, first of all, I wouldn't recommend a near-death experience. It's yeah. very unsettling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would be step one. Mm -hmm. uh, step two would be... Um, I don't think that uh, a near death experience is the single thing that makes you establish any sort of contact and um whether it's already there is something for you to find out and I suppose you could do that in a number of ways but I don't think that, I don't think it's something you do I think it's something that happens as a result of life happening. So um, this is one of the things they uh, continuously bring up is um, be patient. And that was one of the hardest things for me in my life, patience. I'm not saying that I'm doing great now, but I'm doing a lot better. And um, things will go the way they're supposed to go. So my advice would be not to enforce anything. Yeah. Just keep your eyes and your ears and preferably your heart as well open. And um, also be aware of... Uh, of um you know other frequencies that might have um the wrong intention and i think that if you are actively looking for it it's uh more likely that you would tap into one of these uh one of these frequencies with with malintent so more in, in, in the direction of service to self. Yeah. And instead of service to others energy. Yeah. But if you're if you're um if you have a good uh, a good connection with your own heart, you'll be able to tell the difference. That's one of the things I have to say that that uh, that improved uh, very much in my life as well is that I um, I've been been able to um, 
shield myself better from uh, from from the wrong energy, the the wrong frequencies, the ones that do not have uh, my interest in mind. And I'm not saying that I I've, I've become maybe have become better in shielding. It's not the right term. Mm -hmm. um, it's become rather effortless. Whereas uh, previously I would have uh, much trouble keeping them at bay. So uh, that that is one of the things that improved uh, also with with uh, with the whole uh, NDE uh, ordeal and the realization that um, that I had an open channel. I suppose that having an open channel uh, allows you to to keep. Uh, open channels that could be uh, abused that, that that is easier to keep those closed and the channel that uh, that my people uses mm. is, um, is very um, very clean so to say and are they um, guiding you, your people, your connection with the Arcturians on your soul mission here on Earth? Yeah, uh, I, I definitely think so. Uh, although, um, I suppose you could call that... Uh, if if we're we're talking uh, uh, science fiction here, I, I guess you could call that the prime directive. You know, they shouldn't interfere as much uh, without me asking for it. So it's more of a um, it's more of a question answer type of thing. So I, I don't I don't think that 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 they're actively meddling with anything in my life. Um, it's just that I have uh, I have a channel where I can find stuff out to be able to uh, determine my next steps. Ask them for guidance. Yeah. No way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's not that they, they would just do it uh, autonomously. And is it like... Uh, unless, uh, unless they really feel that they have to say something, then okay. they'll push themselves through. <laughs> okay, just on this on this right moment? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's the... Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'll tell you when that happens. <laughs> okay, my next question for you, Marcel, is that... Um, are people coming to you and ask for, hey, you are a channel and you can contact or have a contact with the Arcturians. Can you tell me uh, and I have a bunch of questions and they want some answers? I don't think that is the way that it should go. Or is it just when you are some somewhere and, and uh, with friends or family or acquaintances, that there's sometimes something is to be said. Is it more in that way? Uh, okay, if I understand you correctly, mm -hmm. you're asking whether uh, people come to me for consultancy. Yeah, yeah, in that way. Well, no, no, they don't. Uh, because of a number of reasons, I suppose. Uh, one uh, being I don't advertise this. And um, I'm, I'm afraid that if I would, then, uh, then many of them would try to lock me up in a padded cell. 
because it all sounds really weird to a lot of people. Yeah. And then uh, people that um, are actually into this this type of thing, uh, they usually cannot believe that I just have an open channel. Mm -hmm. Because I see so many people that also communicate with the Arcturians, but they really have to go through all sorts of measures to get there. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's just that sometimes I get the idea that they feel it's there's that there's something wrong with the way I do it. And it's not that I do anything. Mm -hmm. That's the whole point. There's just this open channel and, and, and it's being used from both sides when necessary. So uh, that's generally what happens uh, if I'm with, uh, with people that I'm close to and they ask questions, they sometimes they, they start, well, not interfering. That's the wrong <laughs> word. They start participating. Participating, that would be a good word, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. A good word. Okay. Marcel, do you have uh, some advice or some some tips for uh, people who are watching this this podcast and um, they are on 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 the same level or they um, yeah they, they they have that experience maybe in the dream world maybe when they are meditating or really focusing on that energy level um what do you have for advice for them well first of all you're not crazy and don't let anyone ever tell you that you are um so if uh if it happens then it happens and uh, you really have only one job and that is to figure out what uh, comes to you is pure or not and when you exercise your connection with your heart uh, you'll be you'll be able to tell whether something is pure or not so that would be your only job and then you can figure out uh, where it takes you because I suppose there's a lot of things that could happen to you because, you know, it's, it's not just words uh, when they communicate with you. They communicate with, with words, but also with pictures, with uh, moving images. And um, the language is sometimes really hard. It, mm -hmm. Trying to... to to make something of it is is not easy at times because they would mix up um, languages, languages that I know and languages I do not know. Mm -hmm. So, and even sounds that I've never heard before, but even sounds that I'm not even able to reproduce. And I'm pretty good at mimicking stuff, but sometimes it's just, uh, just, sounds like static and um so it could be anything and uh don't write anything off just uh figure out what happens and figure out whether that's pure or not and then you'll be you'll be able to take that next step and decipher whatever it is that uh, that they're trying to tell you. And I keep saying they, but it's it's actually you. So, mm -hmm. but uh, then the conversation conversation becomes a little bit weird because then uh, then I'm going to be saying sentences like uh, uh, figure out what you are saying to you, <laughs> 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 and then it gets a little bit abstract. So, but it's actually you. And uh, your friends on a different plane. Yeah. Wow. 
So in general, be patient, ground yourself, listen to your heart, and don't force anything. Especially that, don't force anything. Yeah, it takes Espe time. Especially don't force any NDEs. Cause, <laughs> no. <laughs> Not recommended. <laughs> and NDEs are? <laughs> Near death oh. experiences. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Particular that. Yeah. 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 Is there something else that you would you mention uh, for closing this, this podcast or for our viewers? A few words, wise advice. No. <laughs> I keep hearing in my left ear. It was fun talking with you. <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> oh and this is something um um this is an exercise that may help you determine whether you are getting messages or not when you say something or when you said a lot of things try to uh Get back into that energy <clears throat> and ask yourself the question, was that me talking? Okay. And of course it was you talking, but which one? Okay. <laughs> well, that's a good one. That could help you uh, tap into uh, whatever uh, you need to know about whether you're getting information or not and remember it's not yours it's not mine it's not not anyone's it's all of us we're all one okay well thank you very much marcel being here on this virtual table with me and doing this podcast about the Arcturian energy and yeah, my dear viewers, I really want to thank you for your time and for listening to this very interesting theme. And uh, maybe in future we'll, uh, yeah, we may see more of Marcel and his Octarians. And for now, I want to say thank you. And until the next time, bye. Bye. <laughs>